What's up guys, welcome back once again. I'm sitting here with on my right Shruti and Pratibha on my left. You come from Hyderabad. Yes. You come from Bangalore. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they both are studying masters in uh, data engineering, which is for me, I think I, it, it is a data science. What yes. do you think? Like, what's your point? On that? Uh, no, the our university more focuses on the research po research part of the data science, not okay. the implementation part. Which, like, you know, it's available on online courses as well. The implementation part, but it is more towards research. That's why we prefer to call it as data engineering, not science. Not a science. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, what you can expect from this video is we will be talking about the process of how they both came here because I know a lot of you guys are watching this and wishing to sit here someday or probably be in Germany, yeah, right? And uh, I'll be really interested to know your stories of both of you. Also talk about how is life here in Magdeburg in terms of cost-wise. Also, I will be interested to talk on the lines of what kind of job you can expect, right? Yes. It's everyone's wish yeah. at the end of the day because you're investing your time and money abroad of course for a better life you're taking an education as a tool to go abroad yes. as a better life right if anything pops up on the way mm -hmm. we can always talk it out okay. all right let's get started all right Pratiba, why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself and walk us through your academics where you come from and everything uh, this is Pratibha and I did my bachelor's in Satyabama University in computer science engineering I got 8.2 CGPA Okay. in my bachelor's i worked in cognizant for two years in sap okay yeah wow cool thanks a lot for that shruti why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself just yeah what i'm from hyderabad i had completed my bachelor's in 2014 in uh, information technology from one of the affiliated colleges of jntu Okay. Do you want me to tell my college name? If you feel comfortable. Yeah, not a problem. It's VBIT. Okay. VBIT from Hyderabad. So yes, I got 80% in my bachelor's and uh, immediately after my bachelor's I joined Infosys. I had worked for three years in Infosys in various fields like BPM and uh, it, it was mainly into software development, you might say. Okay. Yeah. All right, Shruti, I have a first question for you. Mm -hmm. Let's go back okay. where it all started, right? You came two semesters before, that means 2017, winter time. Yes. You came to this country. Mm. But what a lot of people are interested to know from you now is, how was your struggle like? When did that one seed of thought came to your mind that I would like to go and study abroad or Germany for that matter? And can you walk us through step by step be very precise yes. with your steps so that your younger brothers and sisters are watching and they don't take this away from this video. Yeah. Go ahead. So sometime in the month of November 2016, I had this, you know, plan of uh, doing a higher studies, like pursuing masters. So I had started researching from that time, like maybe uh, in the month of December I had started and almost by the end of march i came to a conclusion that these are the list of colleges i want to apply to like in germany and this research i did it from the website called daad right yeah which has everything listed like what courses are present in germany and what is the free structure what are the subjects in that course everything is present over there like Correct. Yeah. that's the encyclopedia or bible whatever you want to call right so I did it and I uh, shortlisted up to five courses and I started applying. The applications generally start in the month of, you know, in the end of March or April. Yeah. So immediately I started applying and yeah, that's it. So how did the process of application begin? Okay, the there, I mean, I had applied to four universities through a medium called UniAssist. Right. Uh, that that is like a medium. We do not contact the universities directly. That helps so us in the you're right. in it, it's, it's a mediator between you as a student and the university. university so yes. UniAssist is an organization. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know if you're really serious about coming to Germany. That's true. Right? Yeah. Don't no worry. Let's just go for it. Yeah. And there was so an you applied through UniAssist. Yes. Right. And uh, what all documents did you collect beforehand to uh, apply there? Yes, uh, we will, uh, for almost all the universities in Germany, uh, IELTS is required, IELTS or a TOEFL is required. How much you scored in IELTS? I got seven. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, right. thank you. So yeah, IELTS is required, IELTS or TOEFL something. And uh, very few universities do ask for a GRE score. But uh, luckily, none of the universities I had applied to asked for it, so I didn't. And all of my uh, marks sheets, 
all uh, from BTEC, intermediate and 10th all those and um, a motivation letter for one university and a letter of recommendation for another university so these are the list of documents I'd apply. and do you do you remember every time you applied for did you have two or three recommendation letters or one that was good enough no for a university they asked for one letter from my em I had worked earlier so one from my employer and one from our uh, like bachelors any any uh, lecturer from bachelors so okay yeah I had given one from my employer that was sufficient so you took all these documents you got it attested I'm sure uh, no uh, no, no. The mark sheets which I had uploaded in uh, UniAssist were yeah. the original ones I had scanned. Correct. So the original ones do not need attestation. Correct. If we are yeah. sending a copy to the university, then attestation is required. Correct. So yeah. usually what happens with UniAssist, this is what happens as far as I know, you send the, you apply through UniAssist but at the same time you send out a hard copy also. Yeah. That's when the attestation, attestation is required. Yeah. Yes. In Hyderabad, where did you go? to get that done? Um, one of my uncles was a lawyer so it was okay. pretty easy for me. <laughs> and you? Where did you go? The same. Um, lawyer? My okay. <laughs> so you can go outside probably a court, some outside a court, there is yes. always a notary guy sitting there yeah. and you can get it notarized. In, right? Even in Hyderabad there are many uh, lawyers who do notary as freelancing I mean I yes. guess yeah. So they will probably charge you some 30 or 40 rupees for a for one attesting one sheet so okay, and it's not uh, difficult to find that as well okay and did you was there any requirement for german language for this course um, what are you studying no <laughs> thankfully no? not yeah <laughs> okay you took all the document applied through uni assist and how many colleges did you get acceptance from i got acceptance from all the colleges i had wow. applied <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's insane okay yeah. <laughs> for you for me i think four uh, colleges in four colleges i got admission my Two of them, God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. Moving forward from here on, I would like to ask you, Pratibha, what are the subjects are you studying right now in this course? Yeah, I studied um, machine learning and uh, information retrieval and also data management for engineering applications and distributed data management. These comes under the databases. Okay. And uh, currently we are in the second semester and we have the courses like uh, data mining 1 and 2 and also frequent uh, pattern mining uh, which comes under the data mining. I mean whomever, whoever is interested in data taking the data mining they can do it. Do you want to elaborate on some of the points? Yeah, uh, our university provides mainly in our course we have the flexibility of choosing the specialization we want. I mean we do not have any mandatory courses to select. We can, there are a list of courses, we can select from those lists and we can select the ones which we want like to move into which specialization we want to so okay. we have that extensive flexibility so the ones who are interested in data mining like for example me i'm talking about myself i want to move into data mining i want to be a data scientist maybe so i can select only the subjects which i want to like in data mining stream i do not okay. yeah if there are subjects in databases and i don't want it there's no there's no one in taking them right so, it's like a menu go when you go to a restaurant uh, yeah but uh, it is kind of a restricted menu you you can say okay. because uh, there are certain credit points we yes. will have to fill in That's modules. A catch. Yeah. Correct. So no matter what you do, you have to reach this certain credit system. Yes, yes, that's correct. Right. That's yeah. what I was thinking in my head. Like, oh, yeah. I just want to do two, and then you're done. Yeah, no, it's no, not like it's that. not like that. <laughs> so you have to take enough subject, enough courses. Yes. To reach to certain credits. Yeah. What is that credit? Limit? Um, now 120 credit limits, wherein th in 120 30 credits are for the thesis, the last part, and then 90 credits are for the subject and one team project. So a person can uh, choose to do more than one team projects, but one is uh, a minimum number of team projects a person has to do. How is the exam pattern here? What is your experience here with exams? Is it more like, uh, you know, in India, this is how it starts. If the question is for two marks, who is Mahatma Gandhi? He was a freedom fighter. For two marks, you wrote that. <laughs> yeah. Now the same question is for 10 marks. Who is Mahatma Gandhi? He was a freedom fighter. <laughs> from Indian independence in 1945 <laughs> if it's for 25 marks oh my god yeah. whole British history is then then yeah. there's a paragraph of Mahatma Gandhi yeah. it doesn't work out like this yeah. here in Germany when they say it's for 10 marks 
you have to write bullet points. Yeah. Yes. Is that what you guys think? Yes. Yes. Uh, when we we have got a chance to check the papers after the reevaluation. Yes. Yeah, reevaluation. So we just see how they correct. If we have to be to the point, correct. we should not write so much. If they don't want that to right, once upon a time, not going to work out. Yeah, yeah. Right. And also, um, if they asked us to list out an advantage, and we just write the advantage like increases performance, yeah, that's yeah. not going to work. Like we have to write how does it increase performance. Got it. So that way, it's the answer should be crisp and short, but at the same time, the answer should have. uh what question has asked in it like you know the content which is required should right. be there yeah what is your strategy both of yours mm-hmm. to get a job here because it's completely different way of working yes. i have made multiple videos about internships mm-hmm. and talking about job culture um yeah what is your strategy if any of you yeah. like to take it forward from here i had started in working in an internship um uh, a month ago so yeah i would say internship is really required one thing is we will get to know european way of working basically it's completely different i have 3 years of work experience back in india but it's different i mean the way people uh, they keep their professional life and personal life aside i mean we will get used to it so an internship is required and yeah people do really look for skills i mean we cannot lie on our resume yeah. and go and you know end up with a job i mean at the workplace if you are not able to perform they'll not think twice to fire you so mm-hmm. yeah we should never I, and if we if we get fired i getting another job is really difficult so yeah and uh, in germany recommendations are also do work but to get a recommendation is really a huge thing like people don't easily send out recommendations to people uh, uh, to the new candidates so yeah get ha- have a good network so that you can get recommendations and uh, ha- do an internship and prepare your cv truthfully i would say right what's your point i think most of the points <laughs> she got <laughs> correct okay um see my take on uh, when it comes to filing or or looking out for a full time job because uh-huh. you will go look out for a job in big cities first yes. of all all right either it's hamburg berlin munich dusseldorf or whatever yeah. or frankfurt yeah. yeah right um my strategy is very simple i always think that go and do internship prove your worth first okay earn the trust of a person from the other side also happens the same another thing what you spoke about is linkedin linkedin is a very strong tool which you can use to you know reach out to people some of the most professional and powerful influential people so make sure that you're maintaining that very well Now my strategy after that is after I do my internship I make sure that I get the boss of that former yeah. to write something on yes. my profile or else you endorse see, you for something endorse yeah. me on my skills it's always the best thing because yes. people look at it like where and who is this giving reference of him you know exactly. also try to uh upload lot of your published papers if you're smart enough about your own topic mm. for example data mining data science iot is a big thing now blockchain ai and everything is getting big yes. where your work will be poured in a lot right so try to put out a lot of 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 your project your you know it's it's just like selling yourself out <laughs> right yeah. you're selling using linkedin as a window that hey see what all i have got mm. Yeah. Do you want to buy me, you know? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, try to do all these things otherwise um uh, yeah, other point what I liked is don't lie on your resume because a yeah. lot of people try to, you know, yeah. they do flashy things. They want to show that I'm the best yeah. while uh while they can still throw you out while you're in probation period which is 6 yes. months in Germany. Um so either parties can yeah. exit. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. All right guys, that was a uh, thanks a lot Pratibha, thanks a lot Shruti. That was a great talk to you guys. I'm sure a lot of people uh have questions still sitting on your head about like hey, what about this part, what about that part? I would request both of you if there are comments in the section, mm-hmm. please answer them back. Sure. If possible, if you have time, if your time permits you. Otherwise, I will try to reply you back or reach out to my Instagram. That's a fast way. All right guys. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>